My name's Alistair Little. I'm a former Loyalist prisoner. I became involved in the conflict in Northern Ireland when I was 14. I went to prison when I was 17 and I was released when I was 30. Part of my reason in being here and part of the work that I'm involved in is about how you deal with the legacy of the conflict. How do you have conversations that are difficult with those that you've seen as your enemy? How do you have conversations with people who lost loved ones or suffered and you may have belonged to an organisation that was responsible for that suffering? How do we deal with issues of justice and truth recovery and reconciliation and what does that mean? People are angry enough, fearful enough or whatever, they, they don't become rational, they, they become irrational and deal with things in a rational way maybe, which is violence I suppose. But if you can get something down of people who have been through conflict and seen how they dealt with differences and then how they try to deal with them now non-violently, that it might, just might, stop people thinking, maybe we should try and skip a violence and just go straight to where they are now. But, you know, that would be the ideal. This project for me is about how we enter into the room with former enemies, moving away from the, the demonisation, the possibility of even former enemies developing relationships, dealing with the legacy of conflict. My son was a soldier and he was killed, he was blown up by the IRA. I had 10 years of... 10 years of hatred and bitterness. I met what I thought of at the time as the enemy, the murderers, killers, I hated them. But I listened to them and I, I changed. Hatred was fed for whatever reason. Because we, did, we weren't born and didn't grow up with hatred in our blood. How do you make sure that hatred doesn't get passed on to the next generation? It was the first actual time that I had actually sat down and thought from start to finish from what had happened to me as a child and it was the first time where I felt that I w wasn't silenced. So then I had taken that home and my dad had come in and he was like, oh, what's that? And I thought, right, there's no better way now than to start here and use this as a starting point. He thought that he had protected us as much as possible, but he had actually cried because he said that he never was aware of what I went through as a child. I don't think there's peace here. What I think it is is conflict management. But if there was peace here, why are these walls still here? And there's 40 more walls in Belfast than there was during the conflict. So it's telling you that there's something fundamentally wrong. That there's now more walls, peace walls, in Belfast now, today, than there was during the conflict. The awakening of me of the hurt and pain that conflict, any conflict causes, is irrelevant to what's said, it, it is the same. And in recognising that hurt and pain, for me, was, was a massive change in my life. And you must fill the void the conflict took up with something other than conflict. And, and, and that's with dialogue, with discussions, you know, with building relationships. This is about having conversations about the difficulties, like talking to the enemy, rehumanising each other. How, what does that look like? How, what does it feel like? This is not about agreeing with each other about everything or losing anything of yourself in terms of your beliefs and aspirations, but that it is possible to have conversations at that very human level which helps to deepen understanding.